Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Haddonfield United Methodist Church. We are happy that you are joining us today. Whether you're back having the wonderful meal that um, the hospitality crew has prepared for us, or whether you're at home enjoying your cup of coffee in your pajamas, doesn't matter. We're so grateful that you've decided to join us today. Uh, today we're going to be celebrating All Saints Sunday, so we're going to be singing a lot of songs that deal with um, just that, our, our legacy. So let's stand together and sing. We're going to sing Faithfulness. Now this one was new a couple weeks ago, so... Hopefully you've been listening to it on your own from our playlist. Here we go. Mercies on
long time. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jason. It is so, so good to see you and uh, uh, good to worship with you on this beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord has made. And today we have a full day. We are going to celebrate All Saints Sunday. And uh, we are going to have organ concert, organ recital tonight at 7 o'clock uh, in the sanctuary. And uh, we are going to have Dr. Caroline Robinson as our guest organist. And this is Mihua Lee Memorial Organ Concert that uh, sponsored by Lee family. And this is a free concert, and so everyone uh, is welcome to join us. And especially if you have any family and friends who love organ music, please bring them. And it's going to be also uh, live streamed as well. And uh, we have new members class uh, next Sunday and the following Sunday on November 10th and 17th. And if you are interested in becoming the member of the church, or if you want to learn more about our church community, please sign up and join us uh, one of the classes when you are available. And we are going to welcome and receive our new members on the Sunday on November 24th. And I want to highlight uh, the one of the mission, uh, hands-on mission opportunity, Feed My Starving Children, hosted by Haddonfield Council of the Churches, and all the churches in the town will gather in the Haddonfield Middle School, and we are going to pack the mobile, mobile pack of the meals uh, on November 16th. You, can, you are invited if you are five years and older, <laughs> yeah, and uh, you, you are going to be there like for an hour or one and a half hour. Uh, and uh, work as a group. And the, all the meals you, you will pack will go to the, uh, will serve children and family who uh, suffer from the food insecurity around the world. And you can join us by sign up. Uh, and there's a QR code on the bulletin. And also you can just let the church office know as well. And last but not least, do you know how young our church is? <laughs> yes, 195 years young. And this month on no in November, we are going to celebrate our 195th anniversary with the dinner and the sermon series Legacy. And we are going to... Uh, Give, we are going to give thanks to God for the rich legacy and history we have inherited in our community and discern how we can pass down to the following generations. And so we invite you to join our anniversary dinner on November 13th. Uh, you can buy tickets online uh, with a QR code available, or you can buy a ticket from Leslie Robinson, and she's going to be in the Welcome Center right after the service, and you can just call the church office uh, anytime if, uh, if that's, uh, that works better for you. Okay, I think that's all I have for the announcement, and so why don't we continue to worship, uh, shouting out our hearts and our voices in praising God. Thank you, Pastor Jason. Let's stand together and continue. We're going to sing Yes, He Can. One, two, three. Sometimes I wonder, is He faithful? Does He see me in my trouble? Does He understand? Sometimes I question, is he able? Can he rescue? Can he save me again and again? But when I look back, did he move every mountain? Did he part every sea? Yes, he did. So yes, he forgotten and I've fallen too far from his hands 
but I know what kind of God he is and I'm trusting in his promises I believe in and I'm singing yes he Before we continue with our next song, can you turn to each other and greet one another in the love of Jesus Christ? and generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all crowns and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry Holy to 
All Saints Day is a universal festival of the church. This festival day directs our attention to the richness of Christian history and the varied experiences of the grace of God by lifting up the lives of the saints. We have the list of the names of the members and friends of Haddonfield United Methodist Church who have died since All Saints Day last year. We remember them in our prayers today and give thanks for their lives. We remember and find strength in, our, in their faith and the faith of all the saints, both known to us and known only to God. Dolores Ria Aspel. Reinhold T. Tommy Bell III. Matt Kellyo. Henny Dales. Anita Davis. Jessica DeVitro. Eloise Douglas. Bob Dragada. Jennifer Dawn. Joseph Dunn. Marion Eckhart. Helen Fenton. Barbara Finney. Angela Fisher. Patricia Grevon. William Bill Harper. Jean Harper. James Hetherington. Van Injayan. 
Reverend Jack Johnson. Lloyd Bodley. Ed Lindell. Reverend Carol McKellen. Patricia Merlino. Stuart Rapture. Adeline Santora. Susan Chant. George Semple. Fred Stas. Mildred Ulrich. Roberta Bobby Vance. Helen Marine Walden. Frederick Williams. Let us take a moment of silence to think about our uh, saints in our own lives. Please join your heart with mine in prayer. O oh God, you have blessed us with saints all of our lives, God of the ages, those who put up with us, and those who prepared us for discipleship, those who have touched us with their compassion, and those who illumine the way for us. You surround us with saints, even when we don't recognize or much less appreciate them, spirit of wonder. For all the saints of every age, especially ours, we give you our gratitude and praise God of community and holy in one. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And now let's bow our heads again for our morning prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather here this morning, let us take time to remember all the departed saints who have helped in our own lives. Oh Lord, how much they have done for us. We recall the persons who supported us, believed and helped us through dark times. The ones who looked at us and said and smiled, saying, I know you can do it. The ones who came and silently sat with us through the darkest moments of our lives when we thought all was lost. They showed us a way through our sorrow. As we remember those people, let us remind ourselves that there are those around us who also need encouragement, who need an ally in their corner, and who do need to be told that they possess the strength to get through their struggles. Lord, let us be those people, the ones who believe in you and share our faith by our actions not just our words. And dear Lord, we know that this coming week will be a time of joy for some and sorrow for others. We pray that whatever the outcome, there will be no violence and that the nation may recall we are the United States. Let us now join our hearts in prayer as the way you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. The word of God for us today is from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Legacy. It's what lives on beyond a person. What impact we leave behind. There are people in our lives who have left legacies, who have taught us important lessons, who have left an imprint on our hearts, and who have made a difference in how we work, live, and invest in others. Faith in Christ calls us to leave a legacy to emerging generations. This November, we celebrate the 195th anniversary of Haddonfield United Methodist Church and seek together to leave a legacy of faith, relationships, calling, and generosity. Well, I was thinking about uh, how we came to come here, first of all. Um, we were uh, lo looking for a, a church home, and my son was uh, to be married here. So we said, well, why don't we go and uh, visit and see what this Haddonfield uh, United Methodist Church is like. When I think about the legacy and like legacies that I've received, um, I think a lot about my grandparents and my grandfather was a really loving guy and cared a lot about people and was always willing to lend a helping hand whenever he could. Um, so when I think about legacy, those are the things that are kind of instilled in me is not necessarily making a big name for myself or making a big name for my family or making a lot of money or anything like that, but being the kind of person that was willing to lend a helping hand, um, somebody that's active in the church, um, somebody that is willing to, to be a, a shoulder to lean on when somebody needs it. This Even Ministry is one of the groups I belong to and feel that that is one way we can reach out to people who are in lonely or in need or just having a, a crisis in their life. and. It's a one-to-one -one confidential meeting each uh, week with someone who needs it. So I would say the legacy that I'm continuing um, or a part of uh, is definitely one of, of activism. Active in the way that I give and active in the way that I help people. Um, one of the things that I really like to think of in terms of the legacy that I leave is uh, music. Just being able to use those kinds of things, those musical talents, um, to show compassion in the world, to be able to show people God's love, um, and to really just minister in that sense. While I would hope that I leave a similar legacy that, that I've been given, it's hard for me because like the legacy that I'm leaving hasn't really been fleshed out yet, right? Um, I'm still fairly young, um, you know, I, I'm a new father, um, so I think Right now, for me, the legacy that I'm trying to leave is just instill the love of God that I feel and that I really uh, cherish and adore um, in my son, um, and for him to be able to take that and then pass it on to others as well. Well, I hope to leave a caring, loving legacy here. One thing about me um, and the legacy that I leave, I would hope that it would be caring. Can we give big hands? Yes. <laughs> I'm grateful uh, to Barbara Sample and Ryan Top.
for sharing their stories with us. And I'm sure you have many stories to tell and to share uh, with your friends and family. And I encourage you to do so in, throughout this month as we think about our legacy. Have you ever watched one of the Star Wars movie series titled The Mandalorian? Please raise your hand. I'm not the only one. Great. <laughs> I don't remember all the stories the, uh, in the previous Star Wars series, but when I watched The Mandalorian last year first, I just fell in love with a cute character, Grogu. Grogu is the same species as Yoda with a strong ability in the Force, and, but as a baby without training, he cannot speak and control his power, and he doesn't even know what power he has. The Mandalorian is a story about the journey of a lone Mandalorian bounty hunter named Dean, as you can see on the screen, navigating the galaxy after the fall of the Empire. The story unfolds the lawless universe where he takes some various bounty missions. However, his life changes dramatically when he is hired to find the child, later known as Grogu. Dean initially works for money, but when he finds Grogu, he decides to protect him and instead of turning him over to the imperial power, and they form a deep bond throughout the journey. Throughout the story, the Dean meets other Mandalorians and learn more about his, his heritage. They share the creed, a set of principles that guide Mandalorian life, emphasizing honor, loyalty, and strict code of behavior, like they are never allowed to remove their helmets in the presence of others, which doesn't make sense for us. The Mandalorian often recite the famous phrase, do you know what it is? Oh, yeah. Yes, this is the way, this is the way to affirm their commitment to their belief and culture. The creed binds them to a way of life that is disciplined, sometimes solitary, and committed to preserving their cultural legacy. When I heard them saying the creed, this is the way, I was moved because it implies so much. They discern what is the right thing to do as a community together, and they are committed to doing it together at whatever cost. When the main character, Dean, decides to protect Grogu, he knows it is inevitable that the Empire will now chase after him. But he does it anyway, and the community helps him a lot. So what is our creed to follow in life as believers? In the church history, we have had various versions of creed to define, clarify, and unify Christian belief amid diverse interpretations, theological debates, and cultural pressures. Early church leaders crafted creed to establish a shared foundation of faith, especially as the Christian community spread across the Roman Empire and beyond. By crafting and adopting creeds, the early church sought to safeguard and articulate a shared faith identity. Today, we want to explore a concept that lies at the very heart of our belief and binds us across generations, a legacy of faith. So what is a legacy and what is faith? When we talk about a legacy, we are talking about something passed down, a gift that endures long after we are gone. Our faith is both deeply personal and profoundly communal, shared by those who have come before us and strengthened by the teachings, values, and examples they left behind. A legacy of faith is more than doctrines and traditions. It is the lived witnessing of those whose love, hope, and dedication to God have paved the way for us. Faith is trust in God's character, promises, and guidance despite our life circumstances. Faith is not the belief, though, that I can do everything or God will give me everything I want if I work hard enough 
enough and trust hard enough or I, if I um, uh, work hard enough, which is a common misunderstanding among people. Instead, faith is the conviction about God's presence regardless of our emotions or circumstances, even when life doesn't go as planned or when we encounter unexpected crises, losses, or challenges in life. Faith is an inner conviction, as Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Faith comes from God, it's not from us, and our response to God's grace and the Spirit sustains us. We witness this legacy in family members who modeled prayers and integrity, spiritual mentors who guided us, or in the larger faith community that reminds us of God's presence and love and care through each season of our lives. It is the foundation that gives us strength in the times of hardship, inspires us to grow, and encourages us to pass on what we have received. As we reflect on the legacy of faith today, let us consider how we are part of an ongoing story, carrying forward the light that others have entrusted to us. And let us ask ourselves, how can we, too, contribute to this legacy so that future generations may know, may live, and may share in the richness of faith that endures forever? In today's reading, we meet the, the Apostle Paul and Timothy. Timothy was Paul's beloved mentee, brother, and a child in Christ who received the baton of his ministry. In his first missionary journey in the book of Acts, Paul met Timothy's family first, his grand, grand, grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. They were the first converts in Lystra in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey. Timothy, Timothy was the son of the believing Jewish mother and a Greek father, but Paul, when he returned to the church in his second missionary journey, he saw something special in this young man, Timothy. So Paul invited Timothy to join his ministry team and develop a mentoring relationship. And in the latter, his tone is warm and encouraging. And he calls Timothy his beloved child. But you know what? He does not shield him from challenges. Rather, he gives him a challenging task. Paul trusts Timothy and helps him to grow in faith and ministry by empowering, encouraging, and instructing him. Paul reminds him of the legacy of profound and resilient faith that he had witnessed in Timothy's grandmother and mother years ago, and he finds the same faith in him in his own trials and tribulations. Paul encourages him not to be shy with his gift to use, but bold, loving, and sensible using the spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Like Timothy received a rich legacy of faith from his family and his relationship with Paul, we have all received a rich legacy of faith from someone who loves us, cares for us, and invests in us, even when we feel like we are insignificant, whether we grew up in Christian faith, Christian family, or not. Beyond our biological family, someone planted the seed of love and hope with patience in us, and someone gave us second, third, and many chances to try again when we failed. All these experiences along the way form the foundation of our faith on the journey of becoming who we are called to be by God. While reading the text, I thought about my own uh, legacy. Uh, legacy of faith in my family. My mind drifted to my grandmother and my mother who passed their faith down to me. My great-grandmother on my mom's side became a Christian first in my family when missionaries started coming to Korea in the 1880s. We were one, one nation back then. 
and my grandmother grew up during the Japanese occupation from 1910 to 1945, and she went through the Korean War in 1950 in her 20s. Everything was taken away from her during this time. She had to leave her hometown. She was arrested and tortured during the war. After she lost her husband, she brought her five children to Seoul to find an opportunity to work and to survive. Everything was uncertain, but they, and they were impoverished. But her faith was the source of power that, her, that kept her going. I often heard her stories while growing up. However, honestly, they just went in one ear and out the other. Because when I was young, I felt they were irrelevant to me or far removed from my own experiences. However, were they? No one is born alone. We are the legacy of someone or something. But sometimes we do not connect the dots. And life is a journey of making connections between those dots and passing along the legacy we have inherited and built upon. And my... My grandmother was sick and passed away when I was in eighth grade, but she stayed with us until the end of her life. It might be uh, my seventh grade uh, year, and one night while I was studying late to prepare for an exam, I was too tired to stay awake. So do you know what did I do? I dunk my feet in cold water <laughs> to stay alert. When I struggled to stay awake, I heard my grandmother sobbing and praying in the middle of the night, saying, my God, my father, if you'd say, I don't know you, where should I go? Please remember me and have mercy on me. But I was shocked as a child because she was a model Christian to me, and I'd never expected to hear her pray like this. I, but I witnessed the deep personal and authentic prayer, authentic faith from her. Before she passed away, she called each of her child uh, and with their family and worshipped with them. My dad recorded her voice singing, reading, and praying on the cassette tape. And we often listened to it together whenever we missed her, especially on her anniversary. A few years ago, my sister helped to digitalize it, and so I know it's on my dad's cell phone as a recording file for which I am so grateful. Last fall, when I visited my family in South Korea, my mom went through all the diaries she had written over the years. It was a very uncertain time for our family as she was about to diagnose with a cancer. So my dad hated to see her to doing it because it looked like preparing the end of, the, end of her life. But she did it anyway. And she has multitude of diaries where she likes to record her life, her thought, prayers, dreams, and events. And she loves to read them to us later when the dots are connected. One day, she found something exciting and showed me a journal entry she wrote 20 days after I was born. It was her prayer of thanksgiving for her newborn child and prayers for her life, me. She didn't know what gift I would have, but she prayed for her 20-day-old daughter to become a religious leader and preach the gospel in the world. And I never knew until a year ago that my vocation was the answered prayer of my mom, and it was profoundly meaningful. Did you know that you are an answered prayer of someone who loves you, cares for you, and prays for you? You are someone's wildest dream. You are God's wildest dream. Did you know when did you know that when we don't know how to pray, the spirit of the living God intercedes, we decide to deep for words on our behalf. Did you know that Jesus loves you so much? Just not the people next to you, but you, that he emptied himself to give life in eternity, to transform our broken reality with healing, restoration, and forgiveness possible. 
we have inherited an unfathomably rich and profound legacy of faith, and we are called to continue to live it out and pass it along to our future generations. Our church celebrates its 195th anniversary this year, as you know. And this means our community has worshipped our God every single Sunday for 195 years. That's a length of time beyond the measure I can think of. And leaving out the Methodist heritage of standing up for social justice and caring for, caring for the marginalized, our community founded two churches nearby and started a non profit organization in Camden to help the younger generations. We are called to pass a baton of faith to inspire and sustain the next generations, but we cannot pass on what we do not live out. Even if we tell the student or children to be kind, helpful, and forgiving to their friends, if we do not live it out in our own relationships, but resentful, self-centered, or transactional, then unfortunately, we would pass down a spirit of resentment, transactional mindset, or self-centeredness instead of the spirit of love, kindness, and forgiveness, and generosity we want to pass on. It is easy to do good once or twice. However, it is not easy to do it for years and decades. Faithfulness translates faith into action, embodying the trust and loyalty that faith inspires and that this is a spiritual discipline. Faithfulness is the lived expression of faith shown through loyalty, consistency, and obedience over time. Faithfulness is God's nature, demonstrated in creation in the rising sun every morning, no matter how dark the night has been. The transformation doesn't happen overnight. We fall short one day and make a mistake the next. But as long as we remain faithful to God, by loving God, by loving others, we grow in love, forgiveness, and kindness. That's where the transformation can begin, and that's the legacy of faith we want to pass down. In the Mandalorian on the journey, Grogu keeps making mistakes and does things he's not supposed to do out of curiosity or lack of self-control. Sometimes it puts them in serious trouble. However, Dean provides a safe environment for Grogu to find and live to his full potential. Dean left his footprint of carrying on Grogu. The Apostle Paul left his footprint of faith on Timothy. What footprint do we want to leave behind on our children and the following generations throughout the month? We, are, we will continue to unfold our legacy, a legacy of relationship, calling, and generosity. And I look forward to growing in lived faith each and every day with you. Amen. Every day, we have the opportunity to be the church in a hurting world, whether it's by sharing a smile, breaking bread with someone, or helping with the various missions that our church helps the community with. Today, your offering, no matter its size, I am confident will be multiplied by God's love and will help us be the church in a hurting world, passing on a legacy of love and justice and acceptance for all. There are many ways to give including in the basket that the ushers are passing around by texting the number on the screen or through our app online. thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the land and all 
who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, oh, holy, all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. And the angels cry, holy, creation Today, we celebrate the uh, table of love that Jesus initiated. And everyone is welcome, and all children are here, and I'm so grateful to have you as we celebrate the ta table of love. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. And please join your heart with mine in prayer of confession. O loving God, you are the God of second and third and many chances. And thank you for calling us again to be a part of your story, your love, loving story for us. O God, as we come to you and prepare our hearts and please help us to see our need for your grace and we confess what we've done wrong we confess our lack of love and our self selfishness oh lord cleanse us and forgive us as we participate in this table of love as you invite us in jesus precious name we pray amen our God created the world, and our God made you and me in God's image. And our God sent God's one and only Son because He loves us so much. And Jesus, uh, Jesus initiated the church through His suffering, death, and resurrection. And Jesus made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which He gave up Himself for us, He took the bread and uh, gave thanks to him. And uh, he gave it to his disciples and said, take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup and gave thanks to God and gave his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these God's mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. So let us pray together. O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on our, us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. 
make them before us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory to yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The table is set before us and everyone is welcome. There is no prerequisite. Who is thirst and who is hungry for God's love, please come and receive it. We are going to have two stations here and there. And we use the gluten-free bread. And the instruction is to grab one of the pieces of the bread and dip it into the cup and consume it and go back to your seat. And we have also the prepackaged communion sets, also gluten-free and grape juice. And whatever works for you the best, you are uh, welcome to join us. And I invite our communion uh, servers to serve, serve with me. Here you go. Thank you. Please come and receive. Thank you.
lift mine in prayer. Oh, loving God, thank you so much for this table of love. We just experienced the communion with you, and as we freely received it, help us to be freely share your love and mercy and justice and compassion in the places where we are. We love you, O oh Lord. Let your love reign over us in our action, in our hearts, in our lives. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now let's close today's service by singing, See Me Through It. Let's stand together and sing. Things are getting real. Jesus, take the wheel. Only way to get to the other side. Day's getting dark. Life's a little hard, blinded, but I'm not the blue side. I don't got this, I know you got this, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe it before I see it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're gonna see me through it. Anybody can, you can do it. Gotta know when the trial and the pain, fire and the rain, you're gonna see me through it. You're gonna see me through it. If anybody can, you can do it. The only one who knows how to solve them So if you're sitting in the back rock bottom Prayers in the air if you got them Our God is bigger than all our problems The only one who knows how to solve them So if you're sitting in the back rock bottom Prayers in the air I know you're gonna see me through it Anybody can, you can do it Gotta know when the trial and the pain Fire and the rain you're gonna see me through it You're gonna see me through My hope runs away You say the day you're gonna see me through it Yeah, yeah, yeah I know you're gonna see me through it Friends, as we go Let us remember We are the answer to prayer To someone And you are God's wildest dream In God, let us dream big Work hard and pray long together and be faithful as God is to us. Go and stay in the love of God, in the grace of Jesus our Christ, and peace of the Holy Spirit, and be the church in this hurting world. Amen. Our God is bigger than all our problems. The only one who knows how to solve them. So if you're sitting in the back rock bottom, Oh, you go.